This part of the lesson looks at an alternative way to avoid type mismatch errors using variant variables. Let's start by opening up the file that I've downloaded and extracted. And then when that's happened, let's click Enable Content, then head to the Developer tab and open the Visual Basic Editor. In the previous part of this lesson, we avoided type mismatch errors by making sure that we always use the string variable to capture the results of an input box. Once we captured the string, we could then test if we could convert that string into another data type, in this case into a date. And if that was the case, we used the type conversion function to convert the string into the different type and store the result in a variable with the appropriate type. So this means that we needed to have two separate variables for each value that we wanted to capture. This gets quite messy when you've got lots and lots of values you want to capture. So there's a slightly simpler approach just using a single variable and using the variant data type. To demonstrate how this works, let's get rid of our string variable from the top of the subroutine and we'll change the type of our DOB variable into a variant. We can then change any reference to the DOB string variable to just reference the DOB variable as that's the only one we have. And then that's all the modifications to the code that we need. Now let's use some basic debugging techniques to observe what's happening when we run this procedure. I'll head to the view menu and choose locals window. And then I can begin stepping through my using variant subroutine using the F8 key. When we initialize the variant variable is treated as empty and it has no idea of what subtype it should have. So it doesn't know what data type to expect yet. That changes the first time we assign a value to the variable. So when I execute this line, which assigns the result of my input box to the variable, the, the subtype of the variant will be set. Let's enter a value that can be treated as a valid date. So 6 Feb 2019. If I click OK, an input box always returns its result as a string. So even though this could be treated as a valid date, the value is treated as a string data type. The next thing we do is check if the value in that variant variable could be treated as a date. And if it can, we skip over this validation code and we don't exit the subroutine. And then we get to the statement which changes the subtype of the variant. So we're using the cDate function to change the text or the string value into a date. So when I execute this line, you should see that the subtype changes from string to date. The main advantage of this technique over the previous one is that it uses fewer variables. And this might be especially important if you're intending to capture lots of different values. You only need one single variable per value rather than two as the previous technique used. There are one or two minor drawbacks of using this technique, however. First of all, it's less easy to tell at a glance what data type your variable will store at any given point in the procedure. It's also possible that you may inadvertently change the subtype of a variant variable just by referencing the variable using other expressions. These are drawbacks you need to consider, uh, but ultimately the choice of technique is entirely up to you. As long as you're aware of the potential drawbacks, you can decide the best technique. 